so many people talk about awakening, but what does awakening really mean and how do you know you're going through the stages of awakening? Well, if you watch this video, I'm going to unveil to you what has been a great support in my journey and the journeys of thousands of people around the world. Once you identify where you're at, you will be better suited to navigate whatever stage you are and keep moving upward to the state of mastery. Are you ready to journey into the true self, into the state of bliss? I know when I was asked this question a long time ago, are you ready to venture deep within yourself and understand why are you here and be able to excel and receive all the synchronicities and abundance that is always being given to each one of us. But most of the times we're looking somewhere else, our vibration is not allowing us to receive. When I was asked this question, there was no hesitation. I knew I was here to do something great. So I said, yes, the universe, bring it on. So the first stage is satisfaction. And this is where most people dwell most of their time. They're buying toys and they're happy, content where they're at. But it doesn't mean that they're fulfilled. It doesn't mean that they're really experiencing true happiness. We, I call this the superficial level. It's where most people are taught to live their existence. It's just you have money, you have a house, you have a car, you have a nice wife or husband, kids, and that's it. But we see often that people keep going into unconscious habits or destructive habits to be able to fulfill their needs. Because the house, money, having a nice partner or kids or a business is not enough. Unless you really tap in into your limitless potential, you will always be looking for more. And we see couples cheating on each other because they want more of life. We see women going for shoes and men buying cars because they're, um, there's something and they just keep covering that emptiness that is within. And that's why the first state is satisfaction. That's where people just accept what they're given and they are just satisfied, contentment. That is the average state. But then there's a second stage and that's dissatisfaction. And it usually happens when there's a big traumatic experience, when there's a loss, when there's a pain, um, when there's a big um, natural disaster, when there's a global disaster, a pandemic, whatever you want to call it. That is what I call the pains and the triggers that allow human beings to ask within themselves deeper questions, to start to look for a deeper meaning of life. In this stage of dissatisfaction, we start to ask different questions. Why am I here? Is it even worth spending eight hours a day working for somebody else when I'm not fulfilled? Am I giving my best waking hours to an employer that doesn't care about me at all? He just cares about profit. Am I neglecting my family, the ones that really matter in my life, just to make a couple thousand dollars more every month or millions every year? Am I unused talent because I know I could be a great piano player, but uh, my family doesn't accept that. So I prefer doing another corporate job or whatever. So this is second stage dissatisfaction is where we start to ask deeper questions. We still don't have a clue of what else there is in life. We didn't even know that there's another option, but we start to see and feel the pains that we've been holding within. And some people start doing drugs because they just feel so much pain and they start doing drugs. I don't care if they're street drugs or they're pharmaceutical drugs. They just start to numb their pains because their mind and their body is giving them different signals, yet they're trying to avoid listening. By the way, if you didn't know, emotions are the way our higher self, our spirit and our body is giving us indications that there's something to do. If you feel love, it means share the love. Best things in life are to be shared. If you're feeling pain, it's like, hey, move your hand out of the fire. 
your hand is burning, move your hand. So all of this, um, uh, it could be nervous uh, reactions like pain, but it could be emotions like your heart hurts or maybe you feel depressed or you feel anxiety, you feel stressed. All of these different states of emotions are the way that you are communicating with your higher self, but people don't even know they have a higher self. If you're watching this, chances are you already have heard the term higher self. This is, let's put it this way, it's your higher being. It's you beyond your body. It's your connection with the sky, with the heaven, with the cosmos. And it's just a more amplified version of yourself. Because when we live only in our body, we only see things through the body. But when we start to zoom out, we can see things from a much bigger perspective. And this is the higher self. So it doesn't matter why or where is it coming, but it's just your body telling you do something about it. And if you ignore them, you end up with medicated or some people even end up in an institution because they just didn't want to hear the science. Or they were, not, they were understanding the science, but their environment called them crazy. So that's why I always say, I don't think really there's crazy people. It's just misunderstood people, people that don't know how to navigate the emotions they're going. And that's why I'm making this video, for you to understand so you don't feel that you're by yourself. So you don't feel that you're too weird for the world. The world loves uniqueness, what likes weirdness. We know Monsanto and GMOs make everything the same and that doesn't last long and creates so many health issues. And that's why you embracing who you are is exactly what the world needs. So in the dissatisfaction state, you start to understand that there's, there's something you have to do. You just know that it doesn't make sense. And then the third stage is the stage that very few people, but I'm happy to know that more and more people are doing it as we move through these times of Aquarius. The third stage is the stage of what I call complete confusion. It's the state of confusion. Suddenly, everything you believed in crumbles. That's why when there's an economic crisis, or as I mentioned before, a global pandemic or whatever, or pandemic, whatever you want to call it, where there's a natural disaster, things that you really were so sure that were true, suddenly your beliefs crumble. People that believe in God as a figure that takes care and then they lose all their money. They're like, oh, God doesn't love me, so I, I must find a new way. Their, their partner cheats on them. Uh, they have a loss in their life of their kid, their parents, whatever. So not only they're asking deeper questions like in a dissatisfaction stage but they're also feeling that they've lost their identity and confusion is exactly the state that brings the best and the most powerful energy from each of us because as you enter into the confusion state you have nothing to hold on that's why i tell people the best thing is to get completely lost so you make sure that when you come back, you don't come back the same. And in this stage of confusion, it's the stage where it's the best to start to reach out, to start to learn from others, reach out to others that are on the similar path. There's people that have gone through what you've been going or what you're currently going. There's people that have been lost and they found themselves by being in nature, by doing plant medicine, by finding the right um, advisors and group of friends that maybe supported them through yoga or metaphysical practices. It doesn't really matter. There's so many ways to awaken the divine within. But you can never find what you're looking for unless you get lost. And most people are trying to experience change while still being in the satisfaction stage, which means they want change under their own terms, under their own narrative, under their own paradigm. So even if the best opportunity of their life to get a new job, be relocated, find their love of their life, they won't be able to see it because they're still seeing through the eyes of one that is under the spell of illusion. So when you're in confusion, you will do whatever to find yourself. And that's why it's so beautiful to acknowledge that 
we must lose ourselves to find ourselves. You cannot find that which you believe you've never lost. And in confusion is the stage where the, the right teacher will come. You will enter to a, a bookshop and a book will fall off the shelf. I was talking to a friend and he's like, I never go to bookshops. I usually get them online and I went to a bookshop and suddenly like I got one book and it was how to do the work. I have not read the book, but the title is like, wow, you really are ready to do the work. And he was feeling lost, completely lost, devastated after breaking up with his partner for seven years. So this is how the universe, the universe responds as you let go of your defense and mechanisms, as you let go of your attachment to have things the way you think should be. And then what happens after confusion? Suddenly, there's a spark. That book, that YouTube video, that lecture, that retreat, that vacation, that walk on the park. It can come in all shapes and forms. God, the universe, the unified field, love comes in all shapes and forms. So be attentive, be open. So the next stage is the one called illumination. It was suddenly from being in the darkness, in the most hitting rock bottom, being in the most lower part of your whole existence. Suddenly, there's a fresh breeze of air. There's this light coming. You've seen the light. They call it God's light. When it comes to the clouds, it's dark, but there's this ray of light. It comes to you. And you start to see that there's not only what you were living, it was an illusion, and it doesn't make sense and it will never make sense because it was created to create control, pain. Now you start to see that there's a light to be able to step into a whole new reality. And this is when you say, holy shift, there's another way. And you start to meet people that they've been living this new way for so long. They've been already living in conscious communities. They've been eating organic food. They've been taking care of the earth, they've been taking care of their bodies, their minds, and their spirit. They're manifesting as they wish. They're getting paid whatever they cannot want to get paid. They're generating revenue in so many ways by just being themselves. And you start to realize that you don't have to give in your happiness, your best hours of your life, the time with your family to be able to succeed in life. By you being who you're meant to be, which is very unique. Don't compare to anybody else. Don't try to be the best chess player in the world. Just be the best chess player you can be. Don't try to be the best artist, graphic design in the, in the world. Just be the best you can be. And by you being your unique version, the right ideas, the right creativity will be channeled. The right people will be coming. But that's only in the stage of illumination, when you start to realize that there's other ways. Once you open the quantum field for new possibilities and opportunities, life happens for you and not to you. And it's a shift, complete shift of attitude from victimhood into empowerment. And that's why I love to work with people with mindset because in the spiritual world, I see so many people talking about the spiritual awakening, about the stages of illumination, of awakening, raising your vibration. But we must create and adopt a positive and strong mindset on the way. Because there's many spiritual people that meditate, that breathe, do yoga, work on the earth and the gardens, but their mindset is not strong enough. So they're still at the mercy of their mind instead of full control of their mind. So in this stage of illumination, it's crucial that not only you start to develop yourself spiritually, but you also start to exercise the power of willpower, the strength of willpower. You also start to exercise your mindset through cold showers, through doing things like waking up earlier than usual. That way you can endure the moments where life will suck because you're changing your whole environment by changing your vibration and not everything is going to be a walk in the park and you are navigating this new dimension 
but you need a strong willpower and mindset. And after illumination, after you know that there's another way and that by you dedicating yourself to self-mastery, you are achieving whatever you want to achieve, it comes integration. Integration is the moment when you come back home to visit your parents. When you come back home to your old town where you used to live, it comes to the moment where you don't only took off to do your journey, but you're also ready to share it with your community. You're ready to be a living example that change is possible and that we don't have to hide or go to the other side of the world to live our truth. If we are anchored in our truth and in our power, we can be wherever in the world, even if it's at home, and be that living being of love, compassion, and kindness. And this reminds me of the words of Ram Das that said, if you believe you're spiritual, go spend a weekend with your parents, then you will see. That's why it's so important to not forget your roots, where you come from. It's important that you come back home with those teachings, but not teaching them, but just showing that you're the living example of those teachings. Not preaching, but just embodiment and embodying your new truth and your new set of standards. That's why this set of integration is one that many people in the spiritual world tries to jump. They're like, nope, I bypass this and it's called spiritual bypass and they go live in a bubble like Bali or, or Ibiza or Goa or Costa Rica and they never go back home. But there's still a deep wound within because they have not been able to show their true colors, their true strength and beauty to their family members. So anybody watching this, these are the stages of awakening. And if you have been going through some of this, or you've already gone through them, or you're starting to experience some of this, identify where you're at. Are you completely satisfied? And you, I don't think you'll be watching this video, but maybe, maybe you're completely satisfied. Everything's perfect, but you're not at service to, to humanity. You're not living from your heart. You're just passing by, making money, making love, and collecting boats or cars or shoes, whatever. We are here to live a deep, meaningful experience. And I cannot tell you what that is. I just tell you, you will feel it. You will wake up in the morning knowing that you're here to serve thousands, millions, billions of people, to empower them to also live the best life of their existence. And the second one is dissatisfaction. When you start to see through the veil, through the spell. And the third one is confusion. It's okay to be confused. It's totally fine. You must get lost to be able to find your true self. And then illumination. You see that there's another way. There's another opportunity. You see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then comes integration. You can't jump this step. It's when you integrate all the parts of yourself that are important for you to be the master you're meant to be in this lifetime. This is exciting times, dear ones. We are going through the global shift, the global awakening, and you are part of it. I do my work every day. So many thousands of people, millions of people are doing the work every day, but we need you to also show up. So tomorrow morning when you wake up, choose what and who you want to be. You want to be a product of your environment. You just want to be like a boat flowing with the winds of society. Or you're ready to really anchor in your truth, your breath, your presence, your mindset, your heart set, your soul set. And reclaim your sovereignty. And make a deep, meaningful impact in your life, those around you, and the entire world. We need you. We're waiting for you. If you love this video, share with friends, subscribe on the bottom, uh, click, and just make sure that you enjoy the ride. Blessings, and see you soon.